Eight years ago, I was a fairly typical 16-year-old guy with typical 16-year-old dreams. Not like this guy at all, this wasn't me, and I defy you to actually find a 16-year-old who looks like this. Google Images is a lie. This is 16-year-old me. I was known for two very defining characteristics. My ability to pull off the classic blue flannel green undershirt combo, and my fascination with a very specific type of DIY within the gaming community known as being a moron. In 2012, at this adventurous state, I decided to take out the insides of my beloved Nintendo 64 and put them inside a cardboard box in an attempt to make it more portable, because playing an N64 that was a box was, like, extra defiant of social norms, I guess, I don't know. As a youngin', I had a fascination with old video game consoles, specifically early 3D gaming, and the N64 was my favorite. This obsession led to me discovering the side of the community that makes portable versions of old consoles. Since then, my only dream in life was to make my very own portable N64 console, not with all the fancy soldering, rewiring, controller splitting, and 3D printing that all these skilled, fancy pants nerds were doing. Rather, make one exactly as I would have as a teen with no skills, just hot glue, an actual N64 console, playing actual cartridges instead of a dedicated mini computer. Now, when I was young at the time, I felt hopeless and unable to make this dream come true. I treasured my N64 too much to do something irreversible to it, and I didn't have any money for the extra components I would need. But then something magical happened to me that allowed me to fulfill this dream. I became older and obtained the ability to make money, so it's finally time to fulfill one of my lifelong dreams and build my own portable Nintendo 64 with no printing, welding, wiring, only using things I found from Amazon just like the younger me would have wanted. May he rest in peace. I turned him into Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I'm pretty sure this is everything I'm gonna need to uh, accomplish my dream of finally bringing my life to its full potential and fulfillment. After which, I'll have nothing to live for, but I'll be very content with a portable N64, so equal trade-off. We're gonna take the insides out of my collectible uh, Pikachu N64. I'm kidding, I have a black sharpie one. And this is actually the original N64 that I put inside a cardboard box. Everybody knows about that, right? The notorious cardboard box N64. Classic internet legend. So we're gonna take the insides out of this. Insides of the N64 will be connected to the screen. Now this has a power source, so it's also gonna need to be plugged into the battery. So, so far we have the N64, this, and this all plugging into one battery on the inside. So the battery is actually, it might be the most expensive component out of all this. You can tell because it comes with a carrying case. It's got a lot of ports on it, but the important thing is this, just a standard outlet. You might say we're plugging in three things into the N64. How are we going to make it so that they can all be plugged into this? Aha! Uh -huh. I'm... Oh, I'm having a gastral reflex attack. That's why I have this. Quite frankly, a basic outlet extender. So now we can plug all our components, so this will be inside of, uh, inside of the case as well. So for the case itself, big containers. As you might have guessed, these are uh, what I'm going to be using. Hot glue, which this hot glue gun has the flashiest packaging of everything here. I have this, this is just like a heat knife that cuts plastic really easy. So we will be doing a little bit of plastic carving. Um, of course, with all these components and a lot of electricity being used, it needs some kind of circulation, so I actually did kind of a smart, techie thing, and I got a fan. It's USB, so I can plug it into this. See, I plan these things ahead of time. Obviously, having a regular three-pronged N64 spear controller that looks like a trident that a demon would use uh, will not convert well to being a Game Boy. Quick note, this is Peter's editor, Peter, and I wanted to mention the image in the thumbnail is not the final product for this video, but rather a prototype that I built ahead of time using the parts that I had, with the goal being to make it look exactly like this if I can. I just figured, you know, people come to this video and the first thing they see is the finished product, and what's the point of actually watching the video? So, I, you know, make it a little bit of a surprise, maybe get a better image for the thumbnail. I just wanted to let you know the good news that it might just look wildly different from this. So the screen will be up here, controls will be down here. Now this I have had already, because I've opened this N64 many times in my life. This is just some basic Nintendo screwdrivers, because they're like, ah, we don't want you making <laughs> stupid Tupperware container portable consoles with our stuff. Okay, this is a GameCube adapter, and I know for a fact I got it for this project, and for the life of me, I can't remember why. This having been opened several times, the screws are already pretty loose. And I, of course, uh, have replaced one or two with a basic Phillips screw because who cares? Actually, I care now. I have to go get a regular screwdriver. Look at how tiny the actual control panel in this is. Like, 
We don't even need this metal thing. It's just for cooling purposes. So this is me unscrewing screws from the console. Ooh, look how fast I'm going. That's pretty crazy. Really don't have anything to say. I just had to add narration here. So yeah, this is all an N64 is. But keep in mind, this was made in the 1800s, and so it has a cartridge slot on it. So the cartridge is going to be sticking out, you know, about an inch like that. There's not much I can do about that. You could probably take this off and resolder it in a different direction. I do not want to do that. So however I put this inside my plastic Tupperware container case, I would like these to be sticking out. I'd like this to be sticking out somewhere. And these need to be accessible. So figuring out a way to do all that and make it usable is going to be the difficult part. Also, this just needs to be in the console for it to work. So I don't have an expansion pack. I'm sorry. We're not going to be playing Donkey Kong 64 on this thing. Whoopty flip and do, no monkeys on my console. It's getting hot in here. And there's a window back here, so I'm gonna... Now when I go through and edit this, I'm gonna be paranoid that I'm gonna see some footage of like a peeper peeping in my window. You ever do something like you're working on a big project, like for me it's videos or something, or maybe you're like drawing a, a digital picture and you're zoomed up on a part and you're working on it. And, you know, you, you don't want to take a step back and look at it until it's completely done so that the endorphin rush that you get from making something cool is all at once instead of slowly at a time as you watch a project come together. So that's kind of how I want this to be. I want this to be the most fun I've ever had in my life because I'm really excited to make this. So basically, I want to get everything put together and then test individual parts. Again, there's going to be tons of people in the comments who are like, well, you know, it's... Uh, much easier to simply uh, buy a Raspberry Pi Game Boy that's pre-made and then just play in 64 and I was like, there's better ways to do this. I just don't want to do them. Pikachu looking at this dead N64 like, dang, glad that's not me. Alright, so this will be the screen, and it's going to be like, this is here, and then this is here kind of a thing. Except it's going to look better. Or worse. It's going to look different. Oh yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's pretty powerful thing. Like, if I aim it down, it'll fly away. You know? I thought it might have. Ow! This is all the stuff we're gonna need to put inside, which really isn't that bad. So, we'll just get the case, <sighs> aka plastic organizing container, and kind of plan out how everything is gonna be. Of course, it's gonna be somewhat multi-layered. I'm probably gonna have to fasten some plastic around to hold things up, and, and you know, watch them call it some doodads. <laughs> Alright, you're above me now. Didn't want anyone to get confused there. I think maybe I flipped the room upside down or something. This is a very strong desk, I can assure you. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. We're not fine. I'd just rather have a stool. So first off, I cut off some plastic parts of this spare container to use as risers because I can't just hot glue the motherboard to stuff. This is the first time I'd ever used a hot knife and I didn't realize that, of course, it's going to be melting plastic and creating fumes. So I conveniently use the fan and battery, which I already had, cool it down. Look at me being very resourceful. So I made some little slits for the motherboard to slide into. And after using the knife for a little bit, I remembered that I could probably just use scissors for 90% of the plastic stuff I'm doing. Measured the fit a few times just to make sure it was all good. And then I cut out spots where I wanted the controller ports to stick out of the console. But not before having pudding, of course. It's a very crucial part of this. Why did I leave that in? I needed the motherboard to be placed in a way so that the controller port stuck out, the cartridge slot stuck out the bottom, and so that I could still fit the fan underneath it, which I will cut holes for as well. Overall, my first time using a hot knife wasn't too bad. I had to like remake these circles about 500 times, but for me, that's not too bad. Basically, we've got these pieces of plastic holding it up, these pieces of plastic, which I haven't hot glued any of them yet. Then I drilled exactly one billion holes. All right, so this took a little longer than I thought it would, but that's fine because it's kind of an important factor here. So far, this is going really well. As you can see, it's in there good. There's the fan. I cut out a bunch of holes uh, for ventilation, but I'm gonna have to do more for sure. So, this is the only place that this battery pack can go at this point, and there's not much space above it for the screen. Let me do something like this. It will be protruding ever so slightly. Either way, it's some very high-minded stuff. I don't expect everyone to understand what I'm talking about. It's just cramming things into a small space. It's really not that complicated. The controller is going to be right here. If we have the controls and the buttons literally attached to the lid of this thing, let me get the lid. It's a cheap plastic, so it's going to go like this when you push the buttons. So I would love to have this plastic front of the controller attached to this. All right, okay, I got to get to work.
So this whole thing was just putting plastic brackets to hold everything in place again. This is 90% of the process of putting things in this thing. Surprisingly, the hot glue actually didn't melt the case, uh, even though hot glue is literally just melted plastic. Anyway, can you enjoy this work with my big head in the way? It's, it's great footage, Peter. Good job. I also had to cut some holes in the sides so that the buttons on the battery would show, as you can clearly see again by the great footage is just being blocked by my hand. Uh, I put this kind of apex here to keep things together, keep, keep these edges from wobbling. Fits right there quite nicely. I got some real janky looking holes cut in the side. This one down here is to hold this thing in place. I really like this so far and think it's working great. It's a little heavy. Here, here's the only pet test it needs to pass. I would like if you could play it comfortably in a car. And yes, I know there are some of you out there who may want to play a portable N64 on a train or a boat. I'm just gonna assume the car will be a test that will broadly work for any of them. So I think we'll work on the screen and then uh, we'll call it a day. We'll do the rest of it tomorrow because it's getting a little bit late. Surprisingly enough, I have at least one other thing I want to do today besides build a portable N64. At least one thing. I'll probably use that one thing on like going to the bathroom or something. Uh, for this segment, I chose some music from, what is it, Monkey Ball uh, Step Roll, I think, because um, I thought it was a really funky poppy song. Kind of sounds like something straight out like a Hasbro cartoon. Step on, let it roll. That's my favorite line, because you know, the song itself is actually indicative of the game, where you're using a weed balance board or something to play Monkey Ball. So they kind of asked the artist for this song to write it about Super Monkey Ball and about balancing and all that. I was there in the studio at the time. I got to chat with the vocalist a little bit. She's like, yeah, well, this song is about Monkey Ball and balance. So the lyrics are like, got balancing, playing Monkey Ball. We're doing it. And it kind of sounds like the Sonic uh, Colors theme song. Um, the chorus is coming up here. The, the, the vocal rise is a great song to make a portable N64. Uh, ABC, yep, they threw in the ABC line. All right, that's enough. This was easily the hardest part out of this. Just trying to get the screen to fit here. Look at that. I can tip it around. That's the big thing. Like, even though it's gonna be heavy and obnoxious, I, I at least wanna make it so you can like tip it around without things coming unplugged or falling off or whatever. And it's actually at the point now where we could just plug all the cables in and see if it worked. We wouldn't have the controller yet, but I don't wanna test it yet because this is my baby and I'll do it how I want. My workspace is a mess right now. My back is hurting from sitting in this darn stool, and uh, I'm hungry. So we're gonna pick up on this either tomorrow or really late tonight or something. And I'll be working on the controller, so let's just kind of soak it up and enjoy how clean and nice this looks uh, before I potentially hack up the entire bottom half, because that's probably what's gonna happen. So this part's gonna be a little bit controversial, so I kinda wanna explain what my thought process here and how I was gonna go about the controller. First, I kinda plugged the stuff into the screen, tucked everything in there, but here's the thing. I really, really wanted this to look exactly like the prototype did. That was like my main goal for this. But as you can see me just sitting here contemplating, I started to think about just how much the controls and the buttons would just wobble with the plastic. I wouldn't be able to carve everything correctly so the buttons stuck out correctly. It, it, it needs to be playable. So what I did is I cut the feet off this controller. Yes, I'm pretty sure that's what those are called, right? Anyway, I cut the controller up as best as I could and I was just gonna use the controller itself uh, on the front of the console instead of just taking the buttons and the, uh, the motherboard or whatever it's called. I had to sand it down quite a bit to make it smooth. This is the last thing you'd expect to be doing to portable N64, but oh well. So basically, I also had to have it sticking out about an inch so that the triggers could be used. Uh, so I kind of cut a hole out so it protrudes a little bit, but... So that's why I did it the way I did it. It's for the greater good. You wouldn't understand. Okay, it's a new day. So last night I had a dream that I was walking down the street and I found this young boy and he was trying to play the portable Nintendo 64 which I had made and in the dream apparently mass produced and sold on some sort of black market and he was crying and very sad because he couldn't pull the controller very well and it was, I think until now I've been very selfish and thought, oh well I just kind of want to have one so that I can be the cool guy. Um, but now thinking more, I, I really should be making this something to be used 
and played. So, but I think we have to cut out the edges of this and also make it not quite as thick around these parts. Basically what I'm trying to say is, doggone it, I have to do a lot more cutting now. Or I could just sit here and stare at it for another 10 minutes. Alright, so this is where the project deviates a lot from the prototype version, but we need to make it just more comfortable to hold. So we're gonna make it so you can at least hold the bottom half of the console. Even though it's heavy and you're not really gonna be holding it by there, at least make it comfortable to play. And this was a ton of cutting, taken from other plastic containers. I used up almost all the plastic I had. And this is actually almost like six hours of footage here. But eventually I got it kind of comfortable. I got the controller in place and glued in correctly so it's really sturdy. I added a few extra touches like a cartridge slot and a stand and that was actually everything that needed to be done. That's it. There was nothing else to do. All right, well this is what our portable N64 looks like. I've done all the plastic work that needs to be done. There's enough ventilation for now. The only step now is to test it, which I'm actually pretty excited for. I have to uh, clean up this area because it's a fire hazard, but yeah, I don't need to record and show you guys the cleaning process. We've already watched through like five hours of footage of me cutting plastic and gluing things, so I'll spare you that. Your body is who you are. I hate sitting on this stool. It's as high as the table. It's testing time. Why can't I get cameras right? <sighs> I was gonna do Mario 64, but because uh, it's my favorite game of all time, but despite being my favorite game of all time, I don't have a cartridge, so we're gonna do some Smash Bros instead. Because it's got a really hype startup, and if this thing works, I'm gonna be hype. Alright. That's on. The TV works. And I found out I'm stupid! I didn't I didn't make a hole for the to plug to, to hit the power button. Alright. The moment of truth. As opposed to the moment of lies. Okay, the N64 is on. No signal, what do you mean? What could I possibly be doing wrong here? Let's try Poke Park. Or, it's not Poke Park. Let's go! Smash Bros, you scared me! You're dead, why do I care? That's them! Those are the Pokemon Stadiums! Okay, I don't know how to play this game. I gotta get something else. Okay, I'm a legit moron. I own Mario 64. What is... what... Why would I think I didn't? Really thought I didn't for some weird reason. It's me, Mario! It's him! Mario! Oh, it actually looks pretty good on this screen. Let's see if I can speedrun the first boss. You know, I can't speedrun anything. I don't know the speedrun strats. That's not one of them. That's a cool little tech that I learned. Alright, this is this is hard to play. Whoa, didn't want to do that! I don't know if I deserve to live that. Well, that answers that question. I'm really happy that this is working good. But I must show you, the angle you're seeing it from... It looks pretty good. Like, it's... It's nothing crazy, it's a little bit blurry, it's nothing too crisp. But, in order to use this controller... At this angle, you have to be down here, where things are a little bit, uh, you know, inverted. I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna soak this in and enjoy myself. Check us out. Check us out. Who do you think I am, huh? Who do you think I am? Ah! Who do you think I am? I'm a speedrunner. I know the tricks. I know the tricks. I can execute the tricks. I can do it, because I built this! Because I built this console! I can decide whatever I want. I made this game. I am Mario 64. That's a weird way to go towards the star. Yeah! Aha! I am so much better! Like, for Smash Bros, which is a game where I don't really need to use a shield as much because I'm just fighting CPUs, it's actually pretty good. Like I said, you can plug other controllers in to where I could see where it'd be fine. The magic that I always wanted. A tiny screen playing N64 on an N64 controller. I can pick it up and... Okay, well, I... 
may have broke the game. I can pick it up and carry it around, assuming I don't bump the cartridge. Do I wish it looked a little cooler? Yes. Uh, do I wish it was a little smaller? No, you can make a really tiny emulator if you want, using way simpler stuff. This is how I wanted it to be. Something that I would have made uh, when I was 14 years old. What about making it as if I was 14 is a good thing? Now that I've made like a really basic primitive one, uh, I kind of want to make one that's like legitimately good looking. I, what I'm trying to get at is tune in for the next video when I make a portable PlayStation 5.